In April and May 2012, Alzheimer's Australia Vic presented two post-show forums during the season of Cage's production, Sundowner, performed at the Geelong Performing Arts Centre and the Arts Centre Melbourne. Um, I'm a, a mess. Um, I actually thought it was extraordinarily moving. A very difficult subject treated extremely well, full of feeling, but absolutely terrifying. The production was developed through a series of community forums over 18 months, which brought together people with younger onset dementia, carers of those with dementia, and the creative team involved in the development of the show, including the performers, writer and director. Two things that they, well, you told us that was you felt very strongly about was one, that we didn't want to make a show that was all doom and gloom, but the other one was that um, to try and encourage us to view someone diagnosed with Alzheimer's as it being a change in the person rather than a loss of the person. And that those two things were our, very much at the foundation of all throughout rehearsal and the creation of the work. So Mum nursed her own mother at, in our home until it was too difficult for her to continue. So she knew the disease, we all knew the disease, so when Mum started showing signs and symptoms, I think Mum tried to hide it a bit or, or um, tried to find ways of... of, um, of covering uh, Yeah, covering up <laughs> and, 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 and dealing with it, with it in whatever way she could, and I think she was very brave and very strong because she knew the extent of it. She probably didn't know who we were for about 12 months. The that last 12 tough. months, yeah. <laughs> But up until that point, she knew who we were, although she didn't know um, much else about what was going on. So. That we want music, you know, 24-7 on for her, even when she was asleep, because occasionally she'd sing along and we'd just be absolutely blown away. So the senses play a huge part and also in our memories and I think you know that came up um, in the play and I wanted to just make mention too of the family breakdown which I think you portray so beautifully yeah. um, in this production. Somebody told us we were looking for a definition and somebody said to us that it's not losing your keys that's a problem it's forgetting what your keys are for. So that sticks in my head. <laughs> There's a lot of stages to the disease and I think that's really well depicted in, in the production. And as Chris said, dealing with every stage is really quite awkward and, and quite difficult. You don't know what's around the corner. Everybody's journey is different. And to have the support systems in place is so important to just help you over those hurdles. If you do have concerns about your memory, even if it's a general concern, please feel free to ring our helpline, our Dem National Dementia Helpline, which is 1800 100 500, and talk to people um, about that. And it is in extremely important to support people to live as well as they can for as long as they can and take what joy there is every day. Um, and that's very important. Oh, I feel like almost weepy, actually. It's been really, really affecting. Um, I thought it uh, just portrayed it so well, and there's not one moment where it was overdone. Uh, it just makes you think of you've got to cherish your moments with your loved ones. It's a very gratifying thing for us because when we first, and our general manager, Simone Collins, is here, and you know, when I said, oh, you know, Gerard and I are thinking about doing a show about dementia and her, fa you know, her face <laughs> fell going oh Just how are we going to sell that <laughs> but it's really great and you know GPAC have been fantastic you know and even this event today is fantastic and we are going to Melbourne and we're doing a, a six month national tour next year which is really unheard of for a, we're a very small company and it's a very strange topic to be saying we're doing you know a show about so it is a tour to lots of regional venues and we hope to have forums like this all over the place to, exactly as you say, try and get people talking about it and try and using, yeah, demystifying it. It didn't tell us about what this experience might be like for somebody. It sort of, it, um, it allowed us to feel it. Well, I was really affected by it, actually. This is the second time I've seen it. So many little times where you thought, oh, that's where she must go, in her own little world like that. And I just feel it's a really powerful evocation of Alzheimer's and, and 
you know, the, the, the journey that it is for the people who suffer for it, from it and, and the people who are caring for the people with Alzheimer's too. Gestures, say in a, a dramatic piece, are important but not as foregrounded. It, every little thing, even just in a non-dance sequence, seem to be so significant. Is that, is that part of um, putting the two together, the melding? Oh, Do you think the gesture, for movement, me, absolutely. The, the language the smallest, of it? The smallest motion that Helen mm. does is completely measured and rehearsed. You know, yes. there's nothing random or improvised or... And with the dancers too, you know, absolutely every movement... <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what we say publicly. <laughs> Did you notice she that? Is, <laughs> Helen is the most amazing actress and she's so self-deprecating. It drives me crazy. <laughs> December or January, Mum was home looking after herself, by herself, doing everything. Now, this week, she's been put into a nursing home. It sounds like your mother's progress has been very rapid and that's a, not a normal pattern. I mean, everything, as Pam said, everything's normal with this disease. Unfortunately, there's a huge range. Um, and it's not unusual for a family to think there's something odd about mum, even for years before they finally get a diagnosis. Particularly music and dance were, are always very strong, positive um, moments for people with dementia. There was a great um, story, and I, I can't remember whose it was. This ironically, we always joke about forgetting things. <laughs> but, um, and the, her husband was not very capable, but they would still dance in the kitchen at night time. And it was just, just a great message mm. about you can still find some beauty in the disease. And I think that's what we tried to do with, with having um, the combination of, of yeah, amazing um, dramatical performance, but with, with the music and, and the dance. But what are the underlying patterns that perhaps support an artistic production like this. Are there patterns across particularly early onset um, Alzheimer's? Yes, there are, and we saw a number of them today in the production. Um, the whole theme of the relationship between the mother and the daughter and how that turns around as the disease progresses. How the daughter, and some of the reasons that people will call me looking for some emotional support will be, here I am, I'm looking after mum, and I'm the one that's telling my mum what to do, and it shouldn't be like this. And things like that are very traumatic for family members. My father used to say, let's have a sundowner, and so that was a drink at, you know, six o'clock or on, a, on an evening. It was a lovely experience. But there is a phenomenon called sundowner <laughs> syndrome. People with dementia often get very agitated, um, anxious. Uh, sometimes there's something very important they have to do, and they're insistent that... Usually it's something like, I've got to go home, the kids will be home from school, I've got to make their tea, or something like that which is relevant from their past history and where they may still be for themselves in their mind. Mm -hmm. um, but as a result, this is a difficult time for families to manage their uh, person with dementia who's getting agitated at this time of day. But still, the things that you can do to reduce your risk are the same as the things we should all be doing to reduce our risk, and that is keep both our minds and our bodies active, because the things that we do to keep our hearts healthy help to keep our brains healthy. So all that stuff about good food, lots of exercise, doing new things that keep your brain working on new stuff all the time, um, are all the things that help to keep your brain healthy as well as your body healthy. There's a lot of denial within families. There's not a lot of denial and lack of understanding out in the, the broader community. So I think if this is a way of assisting them to understand, then it's well worth the effort and, and I certainly applaud it. Thank them for the production and for today.